So we're back again outside, and uh, as of recent, a lot of people have posted comments asking, how durable are your swords? Well, these being made of paper, they're actually very, very durable. What I have in front of me is a stack of cardboard. This is about five layers thick. Actually, this is five layers thick. Count it. And uh, let's power test these things. Both of these swords that I'm going to test here today, this was made several years ago. I dub it the Fail Sword. And then the original Elucidator, which is complete and utter crap. This sword is made out of, I believe, four or five layers of 24-pound uh, paper. This is made out of five layers of 110 pound. And I'll show you the difference between the durability of these two types of paper. They're both supported equally the same way, all the way up to the tip with the same materials as uh, popsicle sticks, as you can see. When I break these open, I'll show you how the support structure is made. But with that being said, let's, uh, let's go with a thinner sword. Actually, before we do that, I should probably show you the thickness of this. You really tell the thickness difference uh, if you look at the edge. My guess is that this will cut right through it, or at least halfway, and nothing's going to happen to the blade. Get this chair out of the way. Maybe not. This is why we don't do things out of a hundred, hundred dent, out of 24 pound paper, because this happens. But, it's not too bad. Let's try with something thicker. So we've got about the same depth. The difference is that this didn't break. Let's try it again. Same deal. And again. And again. Nothing still. I have been unable to break the sword conventionally. There we go. After how many strikes, it breaks right where the two pieces meet up, as you can see. Now, if you've seen any of my tutorials, you'll notice that the support structures are actually glued together, kind of like how a brick wall is made. Actually, I got a brick wall right back here. Let me show you how that works. If nobody's seen a brick wall before. So you get one piece of one piece of the popsicle stick, and that covers the gap where two others meet up. And the paper is layered the same way. So what happened here was that it broke at the thinnest possible section, right where the two pieces can join. But other than that. The solid pieces themselves, the places without the gaps, they held up. And I still can't separate the, oh, there we go. So, this is what happened with the wooden support structure. It just tore and shattered like that. And uh, actually on top here we have a glue failure. So I'm pretty sure the glue actually held up. This was made with uh, low temperature hot glue, believe it or not. This was before the time I had that high temp glue gun. So if I were to build a sword, same thickness, same amount of supports, 
This is uh, four layers worth of supports. I would I wouldn't have this problem breakage because of glue failure, and you know one section breaks and it takes the rest of it with it. It's kind of like a domino effect. But you know what? Since we still have a good tip here, let's see how strong this tip is. Let's go and get a grip grip on this thing. Hmm. Almost went through. Let me try that with two hands. Ow. So, it barely came with the back. I don't know if you can see that little dent right there, but I think what happened was that this thing stopped it. But either way, pretty durable stuff. Although, don't treat it like an axe, and you'll be fine. Since I'm already out here and I've got two broken blades as is, what happens if you strike another blade? Let's see what happens. So... Actually, those are afraid to begin with. Let me try that again. Clearly, the inferior blade breaks first, and nothing happens with the overbuilt one. But what happens when you get... What happens when you get two of these? Same thickness, in fact, this is actually the other half of the blade, against each other. Huh. Of course, this is being held in place by this table, so that's not really an accurate demonstration. Hmm. I would have expected both of them to cut into each other about the same. Oh, well, the other one goes, too. Absolutely unpredictable. So, with all of that being said, we don't treat your swords like axes. If you're going to use a sword like an axe, build an axe. I've always said that if you're going to fight with these things, in fact, a lot of people have asked me, can you fight with these things? And from what you saw there, yes, you sort of can. Just treat these as if they were bronze swords. So, no fancy Hollywood fencing, because that would destroy even the sturdiest of steel blades and certainly no full contact with another person's blade edge on. In fact, I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to do that with a real blade because that would just, just just ruin any sort of edge. But on further uh, investigation, this thing was actually only built with four layers of 110. I thought this was a bit more overbuilt. But the original intention of this was supposed to be meant for heavy sparring. And I would say it lasted pretty damn good, because under those conditions, I couldn't get it to break. It took a test like this to finally break this thing. And I finally say I can get this thing out of my house. I absolutely hate this sword. Although this sword, what was left of the Elucidator, was only three layers of 24. It can go through one sheet of cardboard repeatedly just fine, as shown from an earlier test, but five may have been a little too much. I was not expecting it to survive that test at all, but I wasn't expecting it to break in the first hit either. But seeing how it, where it broke where it did, I was not surprised because of how thin this blade is. Either way, I was going to throw it away. Now, the one thing you will know is that this is a very, very old sword. When I first started making these swords, I had deliberately made them huge, large, heavy, and really overbuilt. Although, if you tried to do this with more modern, I would say, swords I had, you've noticed they have started becoming more show pieces and not actual pieces you'd want to fence with. So this probably would not fare as well as 
that fail sword, but it'll definitely be more sturdy than that other three layer sword there. But I still would not try to fence with this thing, mostly because of the amount of time you put into it. I mean, just look at this. These things are bordering on show pieces. Why would you want to fence with something like this, knowing the material it's made out of? I mean, just look at how thin this blade is. This is definitely not something I would try to fence with. Although, this could probably pierce skin. I wouldn't want to thrust this at anybody. Either way, they're very sturdy for the material they are made out of. They could possibly break finger. I should try to get my hands on, like, some human analog standard and try that next time. 